I don't know what is going to happen this episode, but I know it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be beautiful. Right, this destructive death business. And this beautiful flame tiger. I feel like he... He knew more than we knew. He saw things faster than we saw them. He came to a realization about this fight before it was over. He did not win. He did not win. And no opening even. Episode 7, set your heart ablaze. Special text as well. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of terrified. Yep, yes, that is the correct face. Completely unfazed. Not out of breath, not injured. Having a good time. This is such a defining moment. Usual calm and collected Rengoku looking afraid. Yeah, he's dealt no damage at all, but has received a lot. Didn't know about the internal or organs part. I mean, he makes a solid case, but it's not about victory only. Oh, what is this? He's got something left to pull out of him. <laughs> yes, that feels great. Esoteric art. <laughs> yeah, well here's the beauty I was talking about, in more than one way. Set your heart ablaze. So on edge. <laughs> Damn. It looks amazing. Classic blue orange blasts. This is that instant you're talking about. Yes, did he get him? Was it enough? I just look like the neck. Holy crap. Yes, there you go. Oh my god, that was so satisfying. Please tell me that killed him. Please tell me that killed him. Holy crap, that was one of the most satisfying attacks I've ever seen. <laughs> breathe! Uh, breathe! You breathe and you heal. Oh no, it's a flashback! And flashbacks... Ah. No, no, this is a digging deep and living flashback. You dig deep so you can live flashback. About how to survive someone punching you through the stomach. What will you do when someone punches you through the stomach? <sighs> and he took that to heart. <laughs> and he was a good enough kid just to hear that and be like, all right. Mom's got fire eyes herself. Talk about instilling your kids with purpose and then reinforcing this huge message with a little love. He's not becoming a demon. His answer is a solid no. <laughs> oh my god. Damn. He's got something else. Oh, he doesn't even have to kill him, he just has to stall. <laughs> He found his legs. I mean, this one I think help, help is not out of line. He's immobilized. It's so insane that Rengoku's keeping his arm inside of his stomach. That's the commitment he has to this victory and to protecting the kids. I mean, it probably doesn't matter either way. And he's definitely made his choice in terms of what's important to him. But man, what a beautiful sequence with that. Set your heart ablaze. I feel like I'm going to remember that one. Set your heart ablaze. I would like to have that kind of power. I know it's possible too, because it just means finding the right thing to dedicate it to. Maybe there is always a deeper level you can go to, or draw on, if the connection is strong enough, you know? Like a lot of these characters seem to be able to do. Rengoku certainly doesn't lack for connection to life and to ideals. Ah! 
and I believe him. Yes! All of a sudden backfire. God, they're just so wholly not strong enough. No, we were so close. We just need a little bit more. Slicing or time. Pick one. No, 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 no. If he escapes, I'm gonna be so pissed. No! No, we had him! Set the whole forest ablaze. Oh! Speaking of satisfying attacks, but I mean, you just lost your sword. Oh, he's pissed! <laughs> I'm running away from the sun. No honor at all. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah. Uh, it's so infuriating. It's so infuriating. He is. Right, right. Yeah, and he didn't compromise anything. He didn't flee like a coward. Tanjiro is right, 100%. Oh man, it hurts this hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. Ah, I can't even imagine the frustration. And Goku very calm. Oof. This is largely just the story of good and evil, you know, like that's the temptation. Being good immediately puts you at a disadvantage. You know, having rules immediately puts you at a disadvantage. And I think for a lot of people, emotions like fear or anger or resentment or jealousy are too great to consider putting yourself in a position where you can lose like this. Lose the battle in practical terms. You know, the demon side of things where he won, right? Why did he win? Because he had a fight and he got away unscathed and he hurt the other person. But that to me is sort of the villainous interpretation of winning. I mean, the demon survived, but what does he have? You know, he's a slimy little snake man who runs into the woods at the first sign of sunlight. And Goku has something of actual value, you know, hard fought value. And part of that is the fact that he answers to himself and himself only, and he has devoted himself to a higher calling. And he's developed the strength and the self-understanding to the point where he's willing to lose everything else that he has in pursuit of those principles. That to me is heroism. It would have been great if he won the battle too, but he did set out what he planned to do, which is save the kids. Seems pretty much certain that without him, they would have died. But back to the relevance of this, people will fight really hard to be sort of in that demon camp where it's like, I can't possibly face the risk and fear of death or of harm. And so there is no room to entertain courses of action that leave certain sacred things intact. The explanation becomes things like, there is no choice. When the truth is, there is always a choice and the outcome is always uncertain. And there's always a chance. I think what it comes down to is if you're not willing to lose, you will never have anything of value. The glory or honor one can realize in one's life is probably going to be proportional to the amount of pain they can withstand and what they're willing to sacrifice. For characters in shows, that sacrifice can be their literal lives. And I guess that can be true in real life too. But I feel like for most people in everyday life, it's things like sacrificing one's own convenience or one's own comfort or one's own sense of self and identity and things that one cherishes about oneself that are based on lies. Being able to give up the easy route for the difficult route of more responsibility. It's when people are not willing to do that because they're afraid of what that means that they devolve into excuses or devolve into shifting responsibility to other people and thereby justifying their misdeeds or their hatred or whatever the case may be. And for that reason, because I feel there's sort of a growing lack of this that I, I see around me, these characters are so important to me and so sacred. I need these visions, you know, I need these people, I need these Rengokus and All Might's and Erwin Smith's as a reminder, you know, as a beacon that there's something more, you know, there's something more than letting my worst fears and worst emotions and areas where I lack self-confidence get in my own way and make me a worse person. <laughs> he understands though. <laughs> He's totally at peace, unlike me and Tanjiro. <sighs> I see we have a head pat incoming. I shall brace myself for love. Damn you stupid birds. It's all your fault. Okay, so this is not the end of the Rengoku. Journey. He's still helping Tanjiro in his final moments. That's what I said. <laughs> Breathe real, real deep. He had time to take stock in that while he was holding down five cars, huh? That he has the emotional energy and physical energy right now to give. Glowing words to Tanjiro. Set your heart ablaze. It's just a perfect thing to say. <laughs> 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 I 
No one is coming to help. Yeah, he died fulfilling his purpose. Okay, this is beautiful, but that's not true. <laughs> I, okay. We've seen the graveyard. Forehead boy. Yellow boy who's not around. It's amazing, like, just how much has occurred in a time so short he couldn't even learn their names. She would be really proud of him. This is another instance of people sort of realizing their full full purpose. Got another bittersweet moment for a character. Or it's simultaneously painful and also the greatest thing imaginable. It's weird how these moments sort of defy size. You know, it's like, what was the result of this? You know, what did we gain? We didn't really gain anything that we can point at. It's sort of like we avoided a loss. We avoided more loss. And so in that sense, it seems like this terrible tragedy and total waste. And there's an element of that that's true. But at the same time, the fact that Rengoku can achieve this sort of peace and achievement of purpose is such an amazing thing. It's hard to even describe. I mean, this is sort of a big thing to say, and I'm not even totally confident in it, but maybe there's nothing bigger than that sort of realization of self. It's related to something you said, you know, how time doesn't wait, even if you stop and crouch. Life sort of goes on and you can't solve the world's problems by yourself. Even if you can make the world a slightly better place by your having lived but what you can have that's real is moments you know you can have real moments of beauty and peace and understanding and strength and so i always feel conflicted in these scenes when a great character dies but realizes something important because it's it's terribly sad i really like rengoku and i feel like i would have loved so much more of him you know i felt like he was being introduced for like a lot longer of an arc but it's not not to be it seems but at the same time it's hard not to feel inspired and in awe of his final moments and even feel happy for him as weird as that is that he can get that kind of closure that's got to mean something right like this is not accidental it's not for nothing that this has resonance it's not something that's artificially manufactured by a writer you know it it feels real because it is real there's something there even if i can't properly articulate it and so what is that you know what is the thing that makes characters like Rengoku or erwin or other people who achieve true greatness even at the cost of their own lives that feels so right <laughs> And the guy was doing a lot at once, always. That's just a testament to how, how far ahead he is. It's not a weakness. He can. And that was what Rengoku was speaking to. Wow. <laughs> he get to masking his own pain. But he's he's right. Honor the legacy of the past, create a legacy for the future. <laughs> I don't know, there's something great about that. Just the flailing around. Not not right now. Give it a minute. Damn you. The bird going to. You're gonna feel that loss. It was widely loved. Oh man, I don't know. Like. It's terrifying. Maybe it unites them in their will, in their drive. Yeah, it's gonna light a fire. It's let a fire ablaze under their asses. Set your asses ablaze. Get out there and find this cowardly demon. You'll know him by the sword in his back. That is amazing. That's unbelievable considering the, the extent of damage. Yeah, he fulfilled his purpose for sure. Way to make this moment about you. It was just cut so tragically short. We were gonna like train together and stuff and like I said we got a lot of real world experience. It was a little bit too much experience. It's gonna be a road from here. It hurts to see him. They did such a fantastic job establishing his character in just a couple of episodes. I know the movie probably follows the same beats as this arc, but I'm also really grateful for that prologue episode. I feel like that was key in just setting me up to like Rengoku. I don't even really know what it was. They just made me fall in love with this character really quickly. I think it's that he's a source of strength. You know, he's a source of resilience and power and focus in a way that feels both larger than life and also real. And something sacred, which is what makes it so painful to lose him as a character. Do we get a Taisho secret today? I feel like it's that's a tough one to follow. Although a bit of levity would be nice. Or just nothing. 
I see, so you have chosen nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that arc was just on another level. The Mugen arc was spectacular. I didn't know what to expect except for great animation, and boy did we get that, but also we got so much more. I think from season one, everything was sort of raised in quality. Like, the animation, while already good, got a lot better. The action was more intense and more satisfying, but sort of more important to me. The emotional stakes, I think they did a, a really amazing job with this arc, starting with Tanjiro sort of going internal, kind of covering ground that we had skipped earlier, I think, making this relevant, and then also giving us sort of family ties on the outside to match that with Rengoku and having him be such a great character and fulfilling that role so well leading to just an amazing fight because of what was behind it you know for me of course I like good animation and I love things that are visually appealing but it's just a different story if my emotions are there you know it is so much more meaningful to have been rooting for Rengoku and, and to want him to be successful and want him to hold true to his ideals and for the kids to witness that, you know, like it would have been great for them to have had a support figure and for them to have trained with him later. But in a way, he also couldn't have given them a greater gift than he gave them, which is a shining paradigm of what it means to be a fully realized, extremely powerful, internally powerful and externally powerful, beautiful human being, even if it's just for a moment, you know, he's just a golden ray of sunlight that has likely burned an impression into their hearts forever like there's no unseeing that and so his legacy will live on and his actions will mean more than just him saving that train it's so amazingly punctuated by the fact that the villain had that sort of gloating talk about how he won it's like yeah you know he did win in a way in a very limited shallow pathetic way he won but i feel like i'm probably not alone when i say that rengoku also won and he won something of higher value like how many people watch this episode watch the show and are like oh man the villain definitely definitely was the winner there you know it, it doesn't feel satisfying to me at all to go down that road so there's definitely something more at stake here you know there's something bigger than the character bigger than the writing it's like an ideal for which to aspire even if it can't really be named directly it's that feeling it's that connection and that strength even if it's hard to pin down exactly what that is i guess it's easier to pin down what it isn't you know and it isn't excuses it isn't indulging one's weaknesses and shielding oneself from truth and responsibility it's not necessarily winning a battle in itself it's not crushing your enemies it's not blind uncontrolled emotion right it's something greater which means by definition it's something more difficult which is what the hero story often will be it will be resisting the easy you know resisting the easy for the good you know for the ultimate and that is likely where true victory is found so with that arc finished am i wrong in, in thinking this is a major turning point for tanjiro i was talking about like where is tanjiro going to grow i don't know i feel like this was a, a pretty big moment for his character, I can imagine this going all sorts of ways for him in his development. And it's also a relief to see him sort of struggling with that idea of being too weak. Although, like I said, I think that's a testament to actually how strong he is, right? It's like people who are always at the forefront, you know, pushing their limits to the maximum are probably always going to feel that way. They're always going to feel the headwinds because they're at the maximum point of difficulty they possibly could be. People who are in total mastery of things, who are perhaps in a state of like easy boredom, not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but what it might mean in some cases is that they're not sufficiently challenging their potential. So I'm really intrigued and pumped to see where this last, I guess, arc of the available show goes from here. Before the video ends, it's that time again to give a huge, huge thank you to all patrons for all the support, for making this channel possible, for making these videos possible, and as always, just for being the most awesome, cool, smart, funny, great, beautiful people on earth. <laughs> for those who don't know, because I barely ever plug it, videos are one week ahead on Patreon. There are often bonus videos. There's other stuff too. And of course, there are longer versions of the video that are less cut for copyright. So check that out if you're interested. Special thanks goes to those who joined the top tier on Patreon recently. Cookies, Mustafa Blaine, Sarah, and Christopher Ross. Thank you to you. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to everybody for watching. Love all you guys. And I'll see you very soon for the start of the Entertainment District Art.